Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm talking about the light and specifically how to control the light. You know, we run around with these little boxes that capture light, cameras, and um, you know, we're always talking about the light. We're like, oh, I hope I get good light. The light is great. Ooh, the light is moody. The light is this, the light is that. In this video, I wanna talk about how I control the light using four different tools in Luminar Neo. There's two that I use every single photo. Uh, I don't think an edit goes by without me using these two tools. And the other two are two that I consider nice enhancements, uh, optional. Uh, I don't use them every time, but they definitely come in handy and do great things for you. So let's get into it. I've got a photo here, and if you guess that the first tool is Develop Raw, you guess correctly, my friends, because it is the most powerful tool in Luminar. I use it I start with it on every single edit and it's just it's just fantastic so i've got a cityscape here and as you can see this is a very typical image the spots are also typical i'll remove those in a minute but it's a typical image in the sense that uh the foreground's a little bit darker the sky which of course is kind of where the light is is going to be a bit brighter i want to control that and so for me I, I essentially always start here in this light section and i'm working on contrast and, and if you look at that i mean the um number one always shoot raw. You can recover so much from raw files. As you can see there, it just really allows me to pull those highlights back. And I've got, I think, already a much better looking image and haven't really done anything. So I'm going to go with some contrast. I pull down the highlights, brighten the shadows a little bit. I will often come in and experiment with the blacks and whites, depending on kind of the mood that I'm looking to go for in this photo. I think I'm going to do something about like that. I will often experiment with curves as well. And in fact, if you want a video about curves, I did one there. It's kind of a beginner's guide to curves. It's an incredibly, uh, incredibly versatile and powerful tool that really just gives you a lot of control over the light. Hey, um, it also helps you control color, which is what these other tabs do. But I'm on this uh, main tab, kind of this gray circle. You can click on any of these to get to the uh, sort of color tabs, but this is the overall tone curve. And I use it there just a little bit. I am going to do a tiny bit of color here, which is really just going to be a slight temperature change, simply because I like blue and I want this to be a little bit bluer. And I'm going to experiment with tint as well, just to maybe give that a tiny bit of magenta. Again, personal preference. Uh, and this video is mostly uh, really just about the light and controlling the light. But I usually do a little bit of temperature and tint work when I'm in raw develop. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of sharpening as well. So overall, I, I usually go kind of light there, like maybe a 20. Let me show you what we did because this tool is incredibly powerful and we've had a massive, massive impact on the photo. That's what it looked like before and that's what it looks like now. So we've come a really long way, but honestly, I'm just getting started. We're going to jump in to tool number two. Okay, had to get those spots out of the way, but tool number two for me is super contrast. Now, I've talked about this in countless videos. I always start with Develop Raw, and I can't think of a photo in recent, maybe in the last six months, where I've done anything second besides super contrast. It is pretty much always my go-to for uh, tool number two. And in this photo, I'm just kind of experimenting, which is really that's how I approach super contrast. I just experiment. I usually move these about a third of the way on the contrast slider, and then I'll come in with a balance slider for each of these tonal areas and just kind of give it a play, for lack of a better word. So you can see I've got great control over the highlights there, and I'm going to do something about like that, I think. Let me check out these midtones. Yeah, a little bit to the left is giving a little bit nicer pop in that water, and I think I'm going to leave the shadows the way they are. So there it is before, and there it is now. Not a massive difference, but you will also notice the colors get a little bit more intense. It seems a little bit bluer. There it is before, and there it is now. And that's because contrast, when you're impacting contrast, you're going to also impact the appearance of a color. So keep that in mind, and that is another reason why I do color, generally speaking, later in my edit. I always get the light first, uh, get the light set first and then come back and do color later. If you want a video where I talk about all my kind of workflow approaches, uh, like uh, managing light and detail and color, I'm gonna do that. Just let me know in the comments down below. And by the way, I've got a newsletter on my website. You can subscribe to it, that link below. And I'm building an ebook that's gonna be free for my newsletter subscribers, where I'm gonna be sharing a number of tips and tricks in Luminar Neo. Again, free to my newsletter subscribers. Link down below if you get on the newsletter. 
you'll be able to get that for free when it becomes available. In the meantime, I've got other free stuff I give away to newsletter subscribers. Some skies, some textures, some LUTs, and of course a preset pack for Luminar. Um, check that out if you're interested. If not, hey, totally cool. We'll just hang out here on YouTube. Okay, so there's my photo now. Let me show you the before. I've come a long way. I mean, that's a pretty massive impact. Before and current state, I think it's looking pretty good. Let me show you tool number three. Okay, tool number three for me is Relight AI, and that's simply because I typically use it as a gradient to brighten the foreground. That's basically what it comes down to for me. Now, you can also increase or decrease the brightness in the background. Uh, you could also decrease it if you wanted to in the foreground, but it, most cases I find myself clicking on brightness near and moving that a little bit and then taking the depth to about 100, which is essentially to about the middle of the photo. I'm going to pull it back. I don't want to overdo it because I, I like to have the, um, I think it looks natural for the reflection to be a little bit darker than the sky, but I wanted to brighten that just a little bit and Relight AI is a super quick and easy way to do that. So if you look at the before, there it is a little bit darker and after there it is a little bit brighter. And in fact, I might just pull that down a tiny bit more just so as not to overdo it one more time before and after nice little touch to the light and that's kind of how i use relight ai to me it's it's kind of an accent type tool i use it to accent a specific area and for me it's generally speaking always the foreground and speaking of accent let's talk about tool number four and if you guessed accent ai you are absolutely correct and i think you need to be really careful with this tool because it does a lot of stuff it's great at adjusting the light it'll help you balance out the tones in your image but my personal opinion is you're better off getting the light in place, massaged, uh, balanced, whatever you're trying to do with the light. I feel you're better off doing that with Develop Raw and Super Contrast and possibly a little bit of Relight, like I did, and then going to Accent AI as kind of an accent piece. And I talked about this in a, in a video months ago, but if you come in and hit it pretty heavy with Accent AI, you, and now I like that to be clear, but it's fairly over the top. So I like to think of it as an accent kind of piece where I come in and do just a little bit, like a 20 or something like that, to give it a nice little pop. Unless, of course, I'm going for a really dramatic edit, in which case, drag that slider as far as you want. But I think for natural, with a little bit of pop, I think a 20 or so on Accent AI is a great little way to adjust the light and give it a nice little hit. So let me show you the before, a little bit flatter, and after, a little bit more pop in it. And on this one, you know, I might go, maybe a 25. It's just that Accent AI adjusts color. Uh, it does a lot of, with contrast, all that kind of stuff. So I just personally feel you have to be a little bit careful with it and not overdo it. And that's also another reason why I do it later in the edit. I prefer to do other things to the light first, but that's tool number four. And it does have a nice impact on a photo. There it is before, and there it is now. I actually think it helps the sky a little bit, helps the foreground and gives the image overall just a nice little pop. So if you look at the before, fairly bright sky, fairly flat foreground, lacking contrast, lacking really a lot. Not to mention, I think that the tones don't really look that great and the colors are not really what I experienced because this was a prior uh, to sunrise shot downtown here in Austin. And it was a little bit of a blue hour, but this is just one of the raw files from a bracket set that I shot. But I wanted to show you by taking this one, which is fairly bright, you can have a massive, massive impact on the overall look of the photo, light, contrast, color, all that kind of stuff, with just a couple of simple moves, develop raw, super contrast, relight, accent AI at the end for a little kick. Now there may be some other things that I would do to this photo, but in terms of overall look and feel of the photo, I think I've made a huge impact using just these four tools and making some pretty simple moves. So hopefully that gives you some idea of how to use these four tools and the order in which I use them. And if you wanna see more like this, Give me a, a comment down below, a thumbs up. And by the way, if you enjoyed this video, check out that one. I'll be back soon with more, my friends. Thanks for watching. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Until then, adios.